All right, let us pray. Father, we thank you for the life and work and ministry and witness of Vincent. We thank you for the long life that you have given him on this earth. And now that you have taken him back to yourself, we ask, Lord, that you will embrace him in your arms and grant him a place in your eternal kingdom. We pray for his family who mourn his loss, that you will comfort them. Also for Maureen, his friend and neighbor, that you will comfort her. That you will continue to bind this family together in love and fellowship with each other. And that as they go through this time of bereavement, may they recognize your presence with them in this time of sorrow and pain. Now, Father, we ask that as we intentionally draw near to you for these next few moments, that you will draw near to us and speak to our hearts in a fresh new way as we study your word so that we may understand. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay, now today we're going to look at chapter three of um, Romans, but uh, since we missed two weeks, um, last week being Ash Wednesday and the week before being that I was ill, I want us to try to catch up. So next week, we're going to look at chapters four and five um, uh, next week, uh, but this week we will just settle for chapter three, and then next week we'll look at chapters four and five, okay? Uh, would someone read for me? Uh, I need three readers. Um, da -da 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 I would like someone to read chapter three, verses one to eight, and then nine to 20, and then 21 to the end. Who would like to read, please? I'll do Maureen, one to eight. Oh. All right, Maureen, you will do one to eight. Yes, uh, Bryce? Yeah, I'll do nine to uh, 20. 20, yes, and who will do 21 to the end? I'll do 21. Thank you, Iris. Okay. Okay. You may start, Maureen. Not for Maureen. Right, it was Meryl. Okay. I was Marilyn, say Marilyn, I, Marilyn, okay, not Maureen. Well, uh, Ma I got to remember, there's only one Maureen in the congregation. There are three Marilyn. There's so. three Marilyn. <laughs> yes. There's only one Maureen in the congregation. Yes. Go ahead, Marilyn. Okay. Do the Jews then have any advantage over the Gentiles? Or is there any value in being circumcised? Much indeed in every way. In the first place, God trusted his message to the Jews. But what if some of them were not faithful? Does this mean that God will not be faithful? Certainly not. God must be true, even though every man is a liar. As the scripture says, as you must be shown to be right when you speak, you must win your case when you are being tried. But what if you are doing wrong serves to show up more clearly God's doing right? Can we say that God does wrong when he punishes us? This would be the natural question to ask. But by no means, if God is not just, how can he judge the world? But what if my untruth serves God's glory by making his truth stand out more clearly? Why should I still be condemned as a sinner? Why not say then, let us do evil so that good may come. Some people indeed have insulted me by accusing me of saying this very thing. They will be condemned as they should be. Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, Bryce. Well then, should we conclude that we our Jews are better than others? No, not at all. For we are already shown that all people, whether Jews or Gentiles, but under the powers of sin, as the scripture says, no one is righteousness, not even one. No one is truly wise. No one is seeking God. All have turned away, and all have become useless. No one does good, not a single one. Their talk is foul, like a snatch of the open grave. Their tongues are filled with lies. Snakes vomit drips from their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. They rust to commit murder. Destruction and misery are always following them. They don't know where to find peace. They have no fear of God at all. Obviously, the law applies to those who was given, for its the purpose is to keep people from having excuse 
and to show the entire world is guilty before God. For no one, for no one, for no one can can ever make right with God by doing what is the law condemns, commands. The law is simply shows how sinful we are. Thank you, Bryce. Iris. But now a righteousness from God, apart from law, has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He did this to demonstrate his justice, because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time, so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. On what principle? On that of observing the law? No, but on that of faith. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. Is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles too? Yes, of Gentiles too, since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through that same faith. Do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. Thank you so much, Iris. Thank you, Marilyn, Bryce, and, and, and Iris. Um, before I continue, Bryce, what translation are you using, may I ask? Uh, the New Living Translation, Red Letter. Okay, okay. I, just wanted, I just wanted to know. Okay, now before we go on, we start off at chapter three. Let us, let me just uh, recap briefly um, chapter two and, and where we left off uh, two weeks ago. And uh, in, in chapter two, that uh, Paul speaks about um, not avoiding God's judgment, that God's judgment will come, that jo God's judgment is true, that we are not to forget about God's judgment, that only the proud person chooses to do so. And he, and he talks about God's judgment is, is fear um, in chapter two. And, 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 he, and he spoke, and he spoke about the fact that God uh, judges human actions, and, and he's not saying that a person can earn eternal life by his good deeds. Only in faith in Jesus will that person be saved. But um, Paul also speaks about us um, who continue to practice our faith. And so in chapter two, we talked about that, but, but, but Paul also spoke about God judging both Jew and Gentile, he will judge um, everyone. No one is more or less, um, he will be spared. And, and the reason why God's judgment will be fair is because he knows every secret in everybody's life, in everyone's life. You know, um, um, the psalmist tells us, um, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know, when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. And so Paul en emphasizes that God's judgment will be fair and because he knows who we are. But he also went on to talk about, um, because the Jews felt that uh, because they were God's chosen people that they can more or less boast and and they had the law and 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 they followed it or at least tried to follow it um, 
and and the Jews felt that those who were becoming Christians, um, that, that, that the, the Gentiles who were becoming Christians also should follow the laws that they had followed. And so uh, 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 whereas the Jews had God and the laws of God, um, the Gentiles hardly knew anything about God. And that is where there was this tension that evolved. And, and even the Jewish teachers felt that they needed to teach the, the Gentile Christians um, what they needed to know about God in terms of how they knew him as God in, in, the, in Judaism. And Paul was very hasty, was very quick to say, in, um, well, before I even said that, one of the other things that the Jews um, thought about, too, is, is that they felt they had a monopoly on the whole thing. Although there were, uh, were less Christians in Rome that were from the Judaism than were Gentiles, they felt that they were the bee's knees and the cat's whiskers. And so they, 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 they felt that they had a monopoly on God, and the teachers felt that they needed to teach the Gentiles about God, but they wanted to teach the Gentiles about God in their own way, and, 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 and they felt that um, they were better than the others, and we will see this come out in, in chapter three, as we read just now, and, 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 and also it, it, it boiled down when it come to the ending of chapter two, the whole notion about circumcision, which was a sign that God gave to Abraham. Um, it was a covenant between God and his nation. And, but Paul re had to remind them um, uh, when, the, when the Jewish Christians were saying that the Gentile Christians needed to receive circumcision, Paul had to remind them that nobody had a, ever had a good relationship with God because of circumcision. Circumcision doesn't make you have a good relationship with God. Um, um, uh, it, 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 uh, and, and, and what the prophets were trying to say to the Jews, yes, you think of circumcision as a physical thing, but really and truly, circumcision is really a spiritual thing. It is something it, where Moses speaks about circumcised circumcising your hearts in other words that you are to change your lives and and that was something that they could not understand so a real jew that paul is speaking about is is a is a person who obeys god that person does not need to belong to the natural families of the jewish people and, and that person does not need to be circumcised either. And that is where chapter two ends. And it was a shocker um, for the Jews. It was a, a non-complementary um, um, viewpoint from a man who was also a Jew, Paul himself. He was an ardent Jew um, and, um, and supporter of Judaism. And we know that he was a big persecutor of the Christians before he became an ardent supporter of Christianity as well. But he left, we, we left chapter two with this whole notion of Paul saying that a real Jew is not some person who is circumcised or who practiced Judaism. A real Jew is a person who obeys God. A real Jew is some person who does not need to be circumcised physically, but they're circumcised in their hearts. And this is where we now pick up chapter three, where it opens where it opens with this question from the Jews who now were challenging Paul. They're challenging Paul's thoughts as far as being a Jew is concerned. And it talks about what advantage then is there in being a Jew? That is what they're asking um, Paul, or what value is there in circumcision? And, and so, you know, if Paul's thoughts were correct, then circumcision was unnecessary. And that is where they were coming to the, that was coming to the forefront of their minds. What is he talking about? If, if, if we have been told all along, we need to be circumcised to be Jews eight days after we were born. Now, what is this that you're telling us that it is not necessary anymore and that we who are circumcised have to mix with these Gentile Christians who are not? Why are they not being circumcised as well when we have saw this as something that is very important? 
So, so, um, so they were challenging Paul on that. And Paul tells them much in every way, first, that, that they, there is advantages. He says, first of all, you have been entrusted with the very words of God. You have been given God's word. Um, and, and, and therefore, and not only have you been given God's word, you have been given God's law. And, and so these are some of the advantages that you have from being a Jew. And one of the things that we, um, we need to recognize about being Jews and being Israelites and why they were God's chosen people is not because, uh, and the Jews, and Jews got it wrong in this situation. They felt, well, we were God's chosen people. And so we were better than everyone else. But that was not what God That is not the reason why God chose them. God chose them so that they will set the example. They will be, uh, for lack of a better word, the guinea pigs for, for the whole world. They were to set the example of what it means to follow God so that other people in the world will get on board and do the same. And oftentimes, because of their own humanity, because of their own sinfulness, because of their own limitations and, and, and imperfections, they fall quite short. And Paul says that in this chapter, that all have fallen short of the glory of God, including the Jews. And in fact, even at today's, to this morning's mass, um, I know Iris was there and Lorraine, and, uh, but today's, today's mass with the people of Nineveh um, who, were, uh, who were, would have been considered Gentiles and heathen when God sent Jonah to them to tell them that he was going to bring judgment on them. They, they aborted their ways and their doings. They aborted their wicked ways. They went into strict fasting and prayer. Even they fasted the livestock and all. Um, and, um, and, and, and they felt that if they did this and they were serious about this and it was genuine about this, that God may not judge them or punish them. And God changed his mind and, and didn't. And so... And, and it was some, and, and, and the reason for that scripture this morning is that it compared with the Jews who God, who God said, who Jesus said, were not doing the same thing, that they were not obeying God, that they were not following him. Here is it, you talk about the Ninevites, but they followed, they obeyed. Y'all have not. Um, and so we see this whole thing here where Paul is saying to them that in, in, in verse three, that you did not obey the covenant. You did not remain loyal to God, but God always does everything that he promises he will do. What if some did not have faith? Will they lack of, their lack of faith nullify God's faithfulness? And, and, and so Paul is talking here about God's faithfulness and he's saying, no, it doesn't. God is true. People, humanity, humanity tell lies so that you may prove right when you speak and prevail when you judge. And here we find that Paul emphasizes that God's promises are certain, that God's words are always true, even when people lie. And, 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 and this, is, this is a point that he makes to the Jewish people. And, and then we find in verses five and six, and Paul writes, if it, but if our righteousness brings out God righteousness more clearly, what shall we say that God is unjust in bringing his wrath on us? I am using a human argument. Certainly not. If that were so, how could God judge the world? Um, and here we see that Paul is saying that if people didn't, and it's, it's a kind of a backhanded statement, uh, like a backhand slap, because what he's saying is if God, if people did not sin, they might not appreciate God's goodness. And, and, and it's one of these backhand slaps, back arm slaps, where, um, where some people might argue that even um, their evil deeds give honor to God. You know, as I said to, I said to, I said to, and, 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 even, and Paul himself um, uh, is not saying uh, this whole idea that he liked this idea. He's even sorry that he has to mention his idea. But what he's saying is, is that, um, that 
God, that sometimes we only recognize God's goodness when, God, when, when we do something wrong. The same way, we, we, for example, if someone gets ill uh, we, we, and, and, and they're healed, we realize the, the, the goodness of God in all of that. As I said to the class this morning, if everybody was perfect and everything was perfect, then there would be no need for God. Um, and therefore, uh, not that God wants us to, to sin all the time or that we are to say, oh, well, God expects me to sin anyhow, I'm going to do it. That's not what it's about. Um, but there are times that we will sin. And it, and it is then that, we, that when we do that, the hope that Paul is saying is, is that we will recognize the goodness of God and that we will give honor to God in recognizing that goodness. Um, um, uh, so, 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 and, and Paul ends that whole uh, section, someone might argue, if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? Why not say, as we are being slanderously reported as saying, and as some claim that we say, let us do evil that good may result, their condemnation is deserved. And so, again, we will find as we go into chapter six that Paul is going to deal with this issue more fully in chapter six when he talks about, about um, the whole notion of God's truthfulness versus our falsehood. Um, and then as we go into chapter nine to 20, um, verses nine to 20, we have then Again, the Jews are wondering if they are better. Um, here is it. Paul says that we have, the Jews have advantages. Now he said that they were no better than the Gentiles. What should we conclude then? Are we any better? And Paul says, not at all. We have already made the charge that the Jews and Gentiles alike are under, the sin, are under sin. And, and then he goes in now, so, so he's saying to them, no, you have advantages. Yes, you have the law. Yes, you have God's word. Those are your advantages, but you are no different than those um, um, who didn't have it, um, that you are on equal terms with them because of your sin. And, and here, and so in a sense, it boils down to there's no real advantage. There's no, real, there's no favoritism. You're not God's favorites. Yeah, you may be God's chosen, but you're not God's favorites. And, and the reason why you're chosen is not for you to become smug with yourself, but it because, is for you to set an example to others so that others will be drawn to, to, to me in a relationship um, as well. Any questions before I continue? Am I making sense? No, yeah, I have questions that it's not appropriate right now. Say that, Lorraine? I said I have questions, but it's not appropriate right now. You mean for the class or for this now? Yeah, I don't know. I just, you know, in contemporary, in our contemporary world, mm -hmm. um, we seem in, in our country, we seem to favor the Jews because they are God's chosen people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what you're telling me is that is not God. That, that is not how God sees it. Exactly. That's what I'm. That is what I'm telling you. Um, that is not how God sees it. Um, uh, God doesn't. God doesn't favor one person, one set of people over another. Right. Um, um, God is. God is. Um, is about people who, who come to him in faith, who obeyed him, who, who does what is right, who is, uh, um, um, who seek to live the, the way he expects people to live, regardless to who they are. And even this morning, as I said this morning, and you were there too, Lorraine, where I say, you know, I keep always keep saying this, you'll be surprised of who will be in heaven. Yeah. Because, because here it is that, but that, that, that Jesus was saying in the gospel reading today, 
yeah, y'all, y'all frown on, on people like the Ninevites and on people like the Queen of Sheba, but they are going to be the ones who are going to condemn you all because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And they are. The Queen of Sheba came from the south, far point to come and hear the wisdom of Solomon. Y'all ain't interested in that. The people of the, the people of Nineveh, the people of Nineveh went and and um, and and obeyed me, so as not to be punished. But what y'all did, you didn't do that. I told y'all, if you don't behave yourself, the temple of Jerusalem and Jerusalem will be destroyed. And what you did, you ignored me. And what happened? It was destroyed. You know. Um, so so yes. What I am saying is exactly what I'm what I'm saying, what you're what you're hearing me say. That yes, we place we place a lot of thing on the Jews, but as far as God is concerned, uh, not that he's going to throw away the Jews or or whatever, but everybody comes to him on an yeah. equal on equal footing. So, yeah, but so if then, God gave us uh, wait, hold, on a minute, hold on a minute, hold on, hold on a minute, Bryce. I'll let you speak. Let Lorraine finish her point. So, so the Jews weren't special because Jesus was a Jew. You were asking if they were special That's because it. Jesus. If so because Jesus was beautiful. No, uh, yeah. He had to be born somewhere among some people. Mm -hmm. But because some people have the idea that because Jesus, Jesus is a Jew, then the mm -hmm. Jews are up there on the mountain somewhere. Yeah, but uh, but that is not what Paul teaches, and 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 that is what Paul wanted to make sure that 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 he tells the people, both Jews and Gentiles alike. One, you both sin. Two, God can judge both of you. There will be no special treatment in, in, in judging. Three, God gives his grace to all people. It is his free will to give his grace, his unmerited grace, his gift. It goes out to all folks. So, so if you realize and you read the Gospels, there were, there were people who were Samaritans that Jesus was lifting up. People who were Gentiles that Jesus was lifting up. And the, and the Jews could not understand that. Why are you doing that? But yes, you are right, Lorraine. The Jews felt that they were special. But, but for God, for God, there's no favorites. Mm -hmm. There's no favorites. The reason they were chosen was to be a, an example to others um, um, in the world. That was the reason for their being chosen. And, and to show that, and to show that they did not always obey God, not that they didn't do it at times, they did, but to show that they did not always do it, they went into Syrian exile and Babylonian exile and Persian exile. And all of those exiles were as a result of their disobedience. So, so yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Bryce, yeah, you had a question. Go ahead. You were saying yeah, something. If, if God gave us free will, why are people doing so many bad things in the world? I mean, why that's, are people that's doing the reason bad why. things? But, but that's the reason why. Because yeah. he gave us free will. <laughs> that's the so reason God why. Us, so, so what you're saying is, Father, that people have done bad things even throughout the Bible, and God gave them free will, but they didn't want to listen to God. Yeah, but you see, the, the whole notion of God giving people free will, um, and that is, and that is part of what it what it means to be made in the image of God, created in the image of God. But God gives us free will, um, as I say to folks all the time. God does not force anything down our throats. God does not tie our hands behind the, our backs and push it in one way or the other. Yes, there are consequences based on what we do. Um, but the fact remains is, is that God wants us to freely follow him. He does not want, uh, want to force us to follow him. Do you also think he's maybe testing us also? Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. I believe that. Of course. You're absolutely correct, Lorraine. Um, uh, you know, uh, we are, we are, we are, or if you want to put it a different way, when we receive tests, he wants to see what we will do with it. Yeah. 
That's what I mean. <laughs> yes. When we receive tasks, he wants to see what we will do with it. Yeah. How we will handle it, how we will deal with it. And you are correct. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. You were going to say something, Iris, or was it Marilyn? Yes, Iris. I, I was going to say that, you know, throughout the Bible, Abraham, if he was tested, he, yes. all the yes. way through, you know, it, he is always testing someone. Yes. And we will find, and it's interesting that you mention Abraham, because Abraham is going to be predominant character in, 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 in chapter four, the next okay. chapter. Yes, he is. So it is, it is, that's the Holy Spirit leading you, my dear. Um, um, you will see when you read chapter four, that, that, that um, Abraham is the topic of discussion by Paul, as he shows the example of Abraham in this whole scheme of things. As, it is, as, it, as a Jew in relation to God and the covenant and all of that. So yes, you are onto it, my dear. Um, and we see also, what we, what we also see here is in, in where, where um, Paul quotes scripture, we can see that he talks about, you know, there's no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All, they, all have turned away. They have all together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. And, 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 and so these, these are a whole collection of verses from the Old Testament. Um, and, and it shows the wickedness of, pe of people, not necessarily that every single minute person, there wasn't no good persons out there. But, but the point is, is that both Jews, um, I, <laughs> thank you, thank you, uh, 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 Pap, uh, that, is, that is going to be um, coming up in verse... Do, 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 do. Huh? 23. Right, that's coming up. That's coming up. Thank you, Pam. Hey, that's coming up. Um, and, 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 and you see, the thing is about it is, and if we, and I was talking just now about God showing no favoritism, you go back to Genesis, to um, Romans chapter 2 and verse 11, you see that, for God does not show favoritism. And, 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 and that is in Romans chapter 2 and verse 11. So, so here is it. If, Paul is saying that both Jews and Gentiles are under the power of sin. And, and these are and these verses that he has put together um, is to emphasize that sin controls everyone. Sin controls everyone. Um, and that we are all, we are all under that sin. But the thing about it is, is that um, uh, when he talks, when he goes on, he talks about their throats are open graves, their tongues practice deceit, the poison of vipers is on their lips, their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. And you can tell that Paul is saying here how dangerous our mouths are. Um, thanks be to God, we only got one. You can imagine if we had two of them. <laughs> Can you imagine if we had two? We are, when he's talking about their throats are open graves, um, he's, he, he, he's talking about expressing what is coming out from the heart, which is awful. You know, we, we, we tend to say what comes out of our mouths tend to come out from our hearts, what's in our hearts, what we are feeling. And therefore... And, and, and Paul is, is saying here that their throats are open graves, and that's not a good thing. It is the, the corruption of the heart, um, um, you know, that as a result of sin, people use their, their throats and their mouths and their tongues and their lips in the wrong way. That is what he's saying in, in, in verse 13 and verses 13 um, and 14. Um, even James, if you read the letter of James, James usually also compared a tongue with something that is poisonous. So, so I think it's James chapter three, uh, in James chapter three. So here is it. Paul is talking again as he moves in. He's talking about evil actions that often the result of evil words. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways and the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. All of these words um, 
tells us and emphasizes how people are quick to attack and to hurt other people. That's what Paul is saying here. And he's also saying that we can't be, we, 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 we cannot be doing this. So, so, and then when we get into verses 19 and 20, um, now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. And, and, and there were Jews who felt that these verses were only meant for the, 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 the Gentiles. But little did they know that the Gentiles did not have the law. They didn't. And Paul had to explain that the law cannot make people righteous. Yes, you have the law, but the law does not make you righteous. That is not the purpose of the law. The purpose of the law, um, or at least one of the primary purposes of the law, is to show the meaning of sin to people that the law proves that everyone falls short. Um, and so, um, and that everyone is guilty. So you see that playing out in this whole notion when it comes to the purpose of the law. Um, and, and also Paul is also saying to that nobody can become righteous by means of their own good works because we all sin. Sin controls everyone's lives. And, um, and you do not become righteous by any Jewish ceremonies that you conduct. You don't become righteous by any rituals in the Episcopal Church. That is not how righteousness um, comes about. And, 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 and it's not, and, 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 and what he's saying is to them, as he says to us, you know, so you, you don't become righteous by circumcision. You don't become righteous by having these dietary laws. That's not what makes you righteous. And now he goes on now in, chapter, in verse 21 to the end to, tells us, to tell us how we become righteous, where righteousness comes, and it comes through faith in Jesus. And so you, 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 you see here, he, he goes on to say, but now a righteousness from God, apart from law, has been made known to has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. And, and so Paul shows us that all persons, both Jews and Gentiles, are unrighteous. He showed that from chapter one right up to now, that we are all sinful, that we have all earned God's wrath, that we are all powerless against sin. That, we, that no one is righteous before God based on their own merit. We, are, we cannot become righteous based on our merit. We are not righteous based on any good works that we do. Um, um, the, the righteousness is provided from God, by God. That's where righteousness um, is provided. Um, so so, so, so um, we, we, see, we see him talk about that here that righteousness that we we need god's righteousness everybody needs god's righteousness because everyone has sinned and this is more important than anything else in the person's life that we need god's righteousness um so 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 when we 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 get into he says uh, he says here this righteousness from god comes through faith in jesus Christ to all who believe, there is no difference for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified, that is, made right with God freely by his grace through the redemption that came by, G by Christ Jesus. So, um, you know, here we have this whole notion that we have all fallen short of God. We have all sinned. And that is the greatest problem that people have in their lives. And it is a terrible problem because sin ruins the relationship between God and with each other. Whenever we sin, we ruin that relationship with God. Whenever we sin, we ruin that relationship with, with one another. Um, and even though we may try to free ourselves from the power of sin, even, uh, we, even when we try to do it in many different ways, 
we still fail. Not that we, not that we do not succeed in preventing, um, in, in, in preventing sin in our lives to occur, but, but eventually we still sin in another way, in some form or fashion. But Paul, one of the, what, what, one thing um, um, that Paul is saying is that people may be very sincere when they do good things, um, and that it is it is better to be a good person than to be a bad person, and that is important. Um, but even when we try these things, they cannot make us a righteous person. Only God can do that um, um yeah so god presented him as the sacrifice meaning christ as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood he did this to demonstrate his justice because in his forbearance he had left his sins committed beforehand unpunished he did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. So, so, so here you see um, Paul is emphasizing that no one lives a perfect life or, or per, ever perfectly good or perfectly holy or righteous or what have you, um, since we have all sinned and sh fallen short. The, 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 but the central thought in justification is that although people clearly and totally deserve to be guilty, God declares them righteous because of their trust in Christ, their faith in Christ. And this, in this, in this happens in a number of ways. It can be free as a gift. It can be by his grace. It can be through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. It can be through faith um, that we receive this righteousness. Um, and so, and so, and so we see, um, um, uh, uh, in in the in the final analysis, we find in verses twenty seven to thirty one, where then is boasting? It is excluded. On what principle? On that of observing the law? No, but on that of faith. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. Is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles too? Yes, of Gentiles too, since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through, through that same faith. Do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. And so here we see Paul is telling um, the, Gentile, the, the, the Jews particularly no one can boast. No one deserves to be righteous. No one earns God's peace, earns peace with God. A person becomes righteous only when he accepts God's gift by means of Jesus. And, Paul, and, and so, and, and that comes through God, uh, Jesus dying on the cross. And then, and then he goes on to talk about, and, and one thing, I know someone asked me this morning, the, verse 28, for we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. And, 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 I, and, and they wanted a little bit of more clarification. I said to them that the, the Jews had the law, the Gentiles did not. And so what Paul is saying here is, and when he says that you can be justified by faith, once you have faith in God, once you are obeying God, whether you have the law or not, you can still be justified. Um, you can still be made right with God. In the same way, the same way again, we use the example of the Ninevite story, Jonah and the, way, and the, and the fish and the Ninevites. The Ninevites didn't have the law, but they obey God. And so they were made right with God by God giving them a second chance, not um, uh, not and uh, not um, bringing judgment upon them. In the same way, Paul is saying to the Jews, "Yes, you have the law; the Gentiles do not. But that does not mean that they cannot be justified if they believe in God, if they have, if they obey God. They can be justified. They can be made right with God the same way that you can, even though you had the law and they didn't." So, in other words, Paul is saying faith is, is the same for everyone. 
there's only one God. Um, um, and, and God do not have a separate God. So Jews and Gentiles all have the same way of faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 tells us that. And so in other words, Paul argues that there is only one way of salvation for both Jew, who is circumcised, as he mentioned there, and Gentile, who is uncircumcised, namely faith in Christ. And once you have that, whether you have the law or not, whether you're uncircumcised physically or not, you can be justified by faith. And then he closes off in verse 31. Do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. And here, um, um, here Paul is saying that the law still has value. And Jesus himself said that. I didn't come to abolish it. I came to fulfill it. And, and, and so Paul is saying the law still has value. And, 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 what, and what Paul imagined was is that someone would oppose him about faith or, anti, or, or maybe charge him about being against the law. And Paul is not saying he's against the law. Um, um, he's not telling people not to obey the law. That's not what he's saying. Um, but what, he, what, what, he's, what he's saying is you cannot use the law um, uh, or we can only, or in fact, in another nutshell, what he's really saying is, is that we can, we can obey the law by means of faith. Um, um, uh, the real meaning of the law is how people want, how God wants people to live. But when it comes to the whole um, being made right with God, the law is not, um, not that it doesn't have value, but it does not differentiate you from others who do not have it or who never had it. And so that is the point that, the, that Paul is trying to make to the Jews. So it, it is a whole radical, a radical change, you know, um, and, and it's almost like Jesus, you know, Jesus came and gave them a whole radical change when he was around in the gospels and tell them, you know, it was said of all, you shouldn't do this, but I say this, um, uh, you know, Jesus's disciples were walking around doing things and eating with unclean hands and all this. And they were like, what, you know, this kind of thing, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and Paul now is doing a similar thing. Um, fellas, don't have a chip on your shoulder. You're not special. You are chosen or you were chosen for a particular reason. And that is that you will be an example to others. However, you are not living up for the reason for which God, the purpose for which God chose you. And so God has now branched out and chosen others. And that, and so if you want to say you're, 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 you've lost your specialty, you have lost your specialty or your specialness, if that's a word. Um, um, that is what Paul is saying. And, and he's then going to, in chapter four, start to give the example of Abraham and how they saw Abraham and, 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 and how Abraham was um, in relationship to God. Any questions? Yes, Pam. So I, I'm just having trouble with the word justify. It's mm -hmm. kind of scattered throughout, um, like from 26 on, they're, mm -hmm. they're justified. God will mm -hmm. justify the mm -hmm. circumcised. I, so I looked it up and it said, make righteous, make righteous it, with, mm -hmm. with Go God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make right with God. It's to be made right with God. Mm hmm. Which seems circular to me. I mean, because God will justify the circumcised by faith. Okay, so God will make right with God. I guess that does it. Does no, it mean no, that no, no justification takes place when God declares those who place their faith in Christ to be righteous? Okay. Okay. Got it. You, you get that's what I'm that's helpful. Thank you. That's what, that's what that's how justification takes place when God declares those who place their faith in in Christ to be righteous. To be righteous. And, yes. 
That is right. So, right. So not the not so it doesn't all matter the, if you it doesn't matter if you're circumcised or not. Not the four million laws that are in Leviticus. No. Well, they're only <laughs> six hundred and something, but they do feel it. They, they, they do feel it. Four million is right. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. And, you see, and and this is the thing that we need to realize. And it's interesting you you say this, um, um, Pam, because I said it to the class this morning. God gave ten laws, the Ten Commandments. Four of them is about love and our relationship with the Father, with him. The other six is about love and our relationship with one another. And also our neighbor, too. What, what, well, yeah, well, that's, one that's, another. Our, that's one another. That's one another. So, and, and what, and what the, the religious leaders and the leaders of Judaism did was to come up with these other nearly 700 laws where you shouldn't eat this, you shouldn't do this, you got to wash your hands, don't talk to no woman on the street, don't talk to those Samaritans because they're no good. Um, 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 you know, these kinds of don't don't deal with lepers because you'll become unclean or anybody who may be dead oh, along the street. All of these laws they came. I'll come to you, Iris. All of these laws they came up with, but these were not God. That's a bunch of lies. These were these were the these were um, these were their own laws, their own man-made laws that they put into to play, and that is where and that is where. When Jesus all the time keeps saying, I didn't come to abolish the law, I come to fulfill it. Jesus wasn't talking about their man-made laws. He talked about the, father, the father's laws. And, and so, when he, so when he started speaking against their laws, they couldn't understand that because they used to interpret their own laws as part of God's law. And that was not true. Is that why he called them hypocrites, Father? Hypocrite. Well, that too, but 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 when but when but the laws when Jesus talk about coming to fulfill the law, he's talking about the Ten Commandments, the law that came from God. Did, does that make sense to you, Pam? You understand where I'm coming from? Yeah, I have a follow up question, but let me yes. let Iris go. Iris, go ahead, Iris. Well, that was my question for you. It started off with Moses and the Ten Commandments. Right. Where did right. they go wrong? You know, I mean, they just didn't stay with it, did they? And you just explained I mean, why yes. they keep them all up. That was yes. the question. Yes. Yes. You know, and that different. is where, and that is where they went wrong because when they introduced these other laws, they cut off people. Here is God tell you, I want you to love each other, well, love one another. I want you to uh, do things that are not going to hurt the other person. Uh, and what do you do? No, you decide, oh, that fellow's a leper. I don't want to be with him. Uh, he's outcast. You start differentiating and, um, people. And therefore, Jesus was much against that, much against that. Is that why you called them hypocrites, Father? Um, apart from other stuff, but yes. Go ahead, Pam. You had a follow-up. Yeah, so um, I like the way you said that with it, the the Ten Commandments really boil down to two because we all know that that's what Jesus gave us, right? Correct. Love God and, and love, love your and, and love love, love others, right? Yeah. So yeah. when Paul's talking about um, our faith in the last line, our faith upholds the law. He's not talking about what the Jewish people think of as the law. He's talking about God's laws, not all exactly. Paul wants Paul. Good question. Paul. Um, Paul is talking about the real meaning of the law that God gave, and that is how God wants people to live. He wants people to show love and kindness. He wants people to be fair. He wants people to 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 respect him. He wants he wants people to respect each other. He doesn't want this. This thing that they have put together, where they ostracize people, you know. Don't you real? Uh, I mean, when you look at Jesus in the Gospels, all these people that they ostracize people. Jesus used to go and heal. He yeah, he reached out to. Them. He reached out to them. Yeah. He reached. He reached out to them. He healed them, because he wanted to show them, fellas, 
you're all, what you all are doing. You're going down the wrong road. This is not what God wanted from you all. God wanted you to show love and kindness to people. And instead of you all doing that, you all have taken it upon yourselves to think that you are so much higher and mighty than others. You're, you're, you, 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 you know, I mean, even widows and children, they, 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 they used to um, ostracize them. What are you doing? Here Jesus <laughs> said, suffer the little children to come to me. What are you doing? You don't, this is not what God is about. This is not what God wants. And, and so that is where that last verse, Paul is saying that God wants people to show love and kindness um, to each other. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's like uh, this past Sunday's gospel, uh, Jesus was tempted by the devil, and the devil asked him so many questions, and then all of a sudden, Jesus said, Jesus said to him, finally, in the end, he said to him, like, okay, uh, you should never test the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the devil kept on showing him all these kingdoms and all these cities, and, <laughs> and then Jesus is like, stop it. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, don't don't put the Lord to the test, man. <laughs> don't put the yeah, Lord but to Satan the does. Test. Yeah, well, but Satan did yes. put the Lord to the test. Yes, yes, very true, very true. <laughs> Any other questions? No, not really. <laughs> okay, so 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 we will stop here today and we will move on to chapters four and five for next week um hopefully i think we sh hopefully we'll be able to cover them um uh, where where paul is going to talk um about abraham as and also adam uh, 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 and yes and also um, the whole notion of Adam, but um, but Abraham as a true example of being justified by faith, and 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 how uh, whereas the Jews revere Abraham, they still miss the mark as to who Abraham really was and what Abraham really did, and and that sort of stuff. So we will see that coming out next week. I have, a, yeah. I have to leave, folks. I'm getting Okay, hungry. yes, you go ahead. Oh, yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah, I'm I gotta leave. leave. Bye-bye. Well, have a good week. Pam, thank you so much for hosting. Okay. God bless. Okay, sure bye -bye. enough. Bye -bye. Thanks, all. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Goodbye.